What up, what up, Salvador Braveman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about crowdfunding. And in this video, I wanna talk about commercializing a new product. So if you have an invention, you've come up with a new product idea, maybe something that's related to apparel, maybe a physical good of some kind, something that's made out of plastic, something that's made out of wood, a design product, a gadget, a gizmo, whatever it is, if you're hoping to commercialize this product, I wanna share some of my thoughts on the stages which you are going to go through. So that way you know the road ahead, you can be more confident when you're pursuing this. And for anyone that wants to really grow a brand, brand from nothing, who wants to create something new and doesn't want to just retail or sell something else or sell a rinky-dink product that doesn't have good quality, but you really want to build a defensive moat around a rock solid brand. I'm going to be talking about that in today's video. All right, man, so again, my name is Salvador Brigman. We got a lot of great content out there that I put out there on this YouTube channel, as well as my podcast, Crowdfunding Demystified. Also, I have some great blog articles on crowdcrux.com, which I've been publishing since 2012 uh, on that website. And we have other sites as well, like Kickstarter Forum, uh, tons of great resources when it comes to books and courses, and really to help you along the path. But in this video, I kinda wanted to make this for a little bit broader audience. And that's because I think that understanding the road ahead is so incredibly pivotal when it comes to being successful at any kind Kind of endeavor. So for example, if you're trying to go and explore, if you have a map and you have a compass, it's a lot easier for you to get around versus if you're the first settlers that are plowing west, you got to figure out the terrain. You got to figure out even how to invent a compass. You got to beware of bears and eagles and like all these like crazy animals and stuff like that, right? In nature. So if you are actually trying to plow ahead, launch a brand, get a product out there to the world, I want to talk about some of the stages that you can go through in terms of commercializing an invention or a product idea. Oh my God, I hate this MBA kind of like verbiage, very technical, very financial, big words that don't really mean anything. So what the heck does even commercializing a product or commercializing an idea mean? So what I really mean by that and kind of breaking it down in my demystifying fashion is that rather than just creating an individual product, a prototype, if you will. So for example, let's just say that you're a baker, okay? And you make some really great homemade cookies. Baking is honestly not my best strong suit, right? But in in terms of baking, right? If you can make a really great batch of cookies, okay? People love your cookies. That would be an example of you creating like a single small batch order for, you know, just a couple of different people. It's almost like a prototype in some ways. If you then decide that you're gonna take this recipe, which you've invented, and this particular method maybe of baking cookies, and instead you're gonna maybe package these cookies and you're gonna sell them to many different restaurants or many different bakeries around the city where then they can sell it to their customers, that that's more of you than thinking about supply chain, production, marketing, partners, distribution, all the things that go into commercializing a product. And if you even took that idea further, let's just say, and you were like, you know what, I'm not just gonna sell it even to people in my own city, I'm gonna then sell it statewide, nationwide, maybe even sell the recipe to other people who then make cookies uh, at a different area in the world and then make those cookies and manufacture them and ship them to other people who then sell them in their stores. That is, my friend, commercializing a product. So you're taking it from the perspective of just having an initial prototype or initial small batch order to really putting scale, putting legs to this endeavor so you can sell it, you can distribute it, you can have supply chain, you can have increased levels of demand, you can have people selling it on your behalf. That is really when you're beginning to commercialize a product. So in terms of some of the, the variables, you obviously need the product, you gotta know the price, you gotta know the place where you're selling it, and you gotta know when it comes to promotion. How the heck are you gonna get the word out there about your famous cookies? But there are some other elements that also go into creating and commercializing a product. So some of the ones that I wrote down here, just to make sure that I click all of these, one would be uh, production, distribution, marketing, sales, customer support, and mainly the key functions that go into setting up a business that's designed to turn raw inputs into external outputs, right? To satisfy happy customers that enjoy the cookies which you're making. So a lot of the times when I'm working with a new coaching student, they tend to get a little bit confused because maybe they don't know how to get the product made. Maybe they don't understand how to price the product as well because they don't even have the materials that go into the product. They don't even know how to promote it or market it because maybe marketing is not their strong suit. Or where the heck am I gonna sell this? Am I gonna sell this on Amazon? Am I gonna ship this to people and distributors are gonna sell it on my behalf or in retail outlets, right? Where am I gonna sell this? Am I gonna sell this on a Shopify store? Am I gonna try to do a crowdfunding campaign, right? So there are many different avenues as well when it comes to where you should sell it. And then I have so many people that will start to think into the future and like, Sal, what's gonna happen if I have returns? What's gonna happen if I miscalculate shipping and these fulfillment costs? 
and taxes and duties and like they start to even just convince themselves out of even starting and trying to commercialize their idea in the first place, right? Because there's so many paths in the road ahead that you just don't know. And because of all these little question marks in your mind, you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't even do it because there's so much fear that's been built up at that point in time. Let's start with the beginning and work outwards. Because I really think that at the, at the end of the day, you can spend a little bit of time thinking about the future, but you really need to focus on where you are at. So let's just say we're starting from the idea phase. The first thing, the most important thing is for you to get that idea out of your head. I actually have a great video on this as to how to make a physical product, as well as some of the materials that you can use to prototype and create an at home functional version of the product. You know, it kind of looks like it, it kind of works, or at least it has a proof of concept in some way. That's really the first step when it comes to turning an idea into an invention, into a working prototype, which you can then experiment with, try with other people, get feedback. So you're turning this idea, first of all, into some kind of a, of a sketch, some kind of 3D renderings maybe, it could be using CAD drawings, CAD designs. You wanna get a 2D and a three-dimensional idea of what this product is like. And again, I have a whole other video on actually how to go about doing this. So it might be some sketches, for example, in different looks and different angles. That might also be like 3D printing, for example. You might be creating an initial prototype, like I mentioned before, but that initial stage is really getting some kind of a proof of concept, getting an idea of the dimensions, the look, the feel, the functionality, the form factor, the design, thinking a little bit as well about the materials. I have a great video as well out there about materials. At this beginning stage, you're figuring out the first step, which is the product. Once you've made it to that first step in terms of commercialization of the products, then you've got to think a little bit more seriously about some of these other items. So for example, price. How am I going to place it? Where am I going to put it? Right? How am I going to sell it online? What about promotion? How am I going to do that? And this is typically when a lot of people will begin to think about some alternatives out there like websites like Kickstarter and Indiegogo. So a lot of these sites will allow you to raise money for the actual costs that are required to produce this product in a much larger quantity. For example, to help with injection molding costs, to help with costs when it comes to that initial order quantity, to help you forecast demand, to help you also test out the pricing as well on the crowdfunding site like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. So you can use these sites in order to kind of rapid fire move through this next cycle, which is figuring out the pricing and figuring out the demand for the actual product. That's really a big stage, right? When it comes to commercialization. So I have many people who will watch my videos, who will write in via email, who shoot me an Instagram message, who will listen to my podcast, will read my book, the Kickstarter launch formula, and they'll discover that this is a path that they want to go down in order to forecast demand, in order to get initial orders and sales to figure out the pricing and also what do people like about their invention or about their products. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrate today. Link in the description. So just pretending that you do run, let's just say a successful Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign, at that point in time, you then are figuring out manufacturing, you're figuring out supply chain, you're figuring out how to fulfill these orders. Let's just say you have 2,000 people that have ordered your product. You're then figuring out how to deliver that to them. Are you shipping this to, for example, a fulfillment company, all of your orders? Are you then shipping this to your own, I don't know, garage? And you're having to convince your wife, like, hey, there's gonna be a lot of products there for a while, right? I'm gonna have to figure out how to get these out there. Or are you actually, you know, thinking about another solution when it comes to fulfillment? So you're kind of using this experience when it comes to Kickstarter of doing your initial batch, your initial order run. Think of this as like the first time if you are baking those cookies that you're actually shipping those out to maybe some local buyers, right? So some local bakeries and some local restaurants and that kind of stuff. And you're figuring out, does it work? Are they willing to pay money? You know, what is the price point when it comes to that? And what is the supply chain like? And how long is it gonna take you as well to fulfill those orders and the logistics behind that? Some of you might decide to go another route when it comes to this. I've had people who will book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me and they're like, Sal, I should have done the Kickstarter right because I haven't watched your channel yet, but I ended up doing like a small order on Shopify and now I'm having to redo it or like the products came out damaged and now I have a bunch of negative reviews, right, when it comes to Amazon. So there, there are many ways to go about it. I do recommend the crowdfunding route, of course, when it comes to Kickstarter and you go for that initial phase. However, you don't necessarily have to go that path. It's just a little bit more difficult when you go some other path. So let's assume that you could either go that route of crowdfunding or you could go another route, which you figure out logistics, manufacturing, supply chain, 
chain, how to deliver this to people. You figure out the price, you figure out what people are um, excited about, what they like most when it comes to the product. You figure that out in another way. At this next point in the commercialization cycle or stages, you then wanna begin to think more seriously about some of the longer term thought process of what you need in order to really scale up this operation. So where are you going to be selling this long term? For example, let's just say you do a Kickstarter campaign, maybe for 30 days, you go into Indiegogo in demand for a further 30 days, and then you decide to open up a Shopify store. So you're gonna be selling this online on Shopify, and maybe you're gonna be doing things like marketing or pay-per-click advertising, or even organic working with influencers in order to get and drive traffic to your Shopify store from that point in time. Or maybe you decide to go through another channel as well. You decide to sell this on Amazon. We decide to go more of like the bread and butter retail outlet route and to really form some relationships with people that can do bulk orders by a bunch of uh, inventory of your product to then sell on your behalf to their existing customer base or their existing foot traffic. This does take some higher order thinking, a little bit more of like MBA style thinking, the way that I call it, and really strategizing when it comes to your business plan, identifying the best sales channels to go after initially, the best uh, marketing channels after that, but really thinking as well about you know where do you wanna hold your inventory? How are you going to be selling this in terms of uh, the ROI, in terms of the invested capital? Um, how are you gonna be managing cash flow? All of these different questions when it comes to this, and also you know how that inventory is going to look over time as the year cycles through, is this a cycle? product is this something that is going to sell throughout the year there are a bunch of questions that come in when you're beginning to think more about placements placement also kind of I would say um, factors into the next segment that I want to talk about which is promotion and one of the, the things that are common to these two variables are also going to be your stakeholders are going to be your partners your vendors right the people that really have a stake in you being successful as a business owner but also that in some way rely on you that you also rely on to a degree in order to produce this product to get this out there into the hands of people and this is kind of one of the, I guess, uncomfortable truths about e-commerce, about selling products online, is that it's not a solo endeavor. It is a team sport, my friends. And this is why sometimes, even if you have your marketing that's amazing, you have tons and tons of sales, sometimes you got a bad partner, you got a bad stakeholder, you got a bad vendor, um, you have supply chain issues that prevent you from maybe making your customers happy. So success in business is about surrounding yourself with the right people, learning from mentors, but also understanding that this is a team sport, and the more you can assemble that rock star team, the easier you're going to have a chance of being successful, of hitting your goals, and ideally, I think as well, making sure that your customers are happy. So you're beginning to get in a little bit of an idea of kind of the skeleton of what a business, a real business looks like. And I think that honestly, that word, you know, commercializing a product, it's honestly just means setting up a business around this identified opportunity. As an entrepreneur, I don't really like to use that word, but as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as someone who's founding a company, you can spot an opportunity. You can create a product that solves a particular problem, but that doesn't mean you're going to be successful as a business owner. What's gonna be successful is if you can actually commercialize this, you can form a business around the opportunity that actually operates and has these different functions when it comes to marketing, sales, customer service, production of the product, logistics that go into this, right? Um, dealing with stakeholders, potentially raising capital. All of these things are actually what's gonna make you successful, not necessarily just if the product is successful. Obviously, if the product is successful, it makes it a lot easier. However, your long-term success, the durability of your business and your brand has to do with your business building skills. Okay, so the last segment that I wanna talk about is promotion and marketing. And obviously I love to talk about marketing on this channel. Sales and marketing is kind of like one of my passions, obviously, uh, when it comes to e-commerce, when it comes to selling products online, when it comes to getting attention, building audiences, building tribes. I love sales and marketing. But one of the most important components of promotion when you are commercializing a product is understanding who you're trying to influence. Whether that's the end customer, you're selling direct to consumer, or that's another business and trying to get them to buy a bunch of your inventory to sell to their foot traffic to their customers? Are you trying to influence a vendor maybe to even do business with you? Are you trying to influence a marketing partner to wanna to also take you on as a marketing client, right? When you start to get into business, you realize it's not just about saying like, hey, I want this, I want this, I want this. It's really also persuading people who you value to also want to work with you, to want to be on your team, to wanna to be a path of your success and to be on that game plan which you've designed when it comes to going from an idea to actually bringing a product into the world, selling it, commercializing it, the things we've been talking about on this video. So to give you an idea, some of your promotional efforts might be invested in graphic design assets. That could be website, et cetera, you know, graphic, social media, all that kind of stuff. Or it could be physical graphics, brochures, flyers, things you're gonna be handing out at trade shows, right? To form partnerships. It could also be on pay-per-click marketing to drive traffic, for example, 
or if you're opening up your own store, maybe it's on a different style of marketing to get people to actually show up at that physical location. Lastly, there's also the style or the type of marketing which you're going to be beginning with and that you're gonna actually use to grow with the company. So for example, some people will focus very heavily on brand campaigns. Maybe they're interested in working with influencers. A great example of this is like Logan Paul, right? With his energy drink, hydration drink, and the way he partners with other people like the UFC or partners with other influencers and celebrities. And I think there's also a business guy who's actually behind that particular brand. Or maybe your approach is actually to have a profitable ad campaign, a profitable ad funnel where you can drive traffic for a certain cost and get an ROI based on the profit margins that go into your product. So there are different types of marketing strategies or different types of tactics that go into that. But that would really be, in my opinion, sort of like the, the next big step when it comes to commercializing a product is understanding a profitable scaling strategy. So that way you can literally pepper the earth with this. You can go anywhere. And you think about like big brands like Coca-Cola, right? You go anywhere, you can see that particular brand. If when it comes to your niche, your industry, you want it to be omnipresent, all over that everyone understands the value of your product. You have to also select the right marketing strategy. In this video, we went through a couple of key things when it comes to commercializing the product, going from idea, some of the steps you need to take then to get it to prototype stage, to figure out price, then to get more into where you're actually going to be selling it, the actual logistics as well, the placement, the promotion, all the different aspects that go into commercializing a product. So I invite you, if you'd like to gain more clarity on this and you have your own product, product idea, or you're trying to raise money using Kickstarter, you can book an individual one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me at the link down below. These are intensive coaching calls. We go through the entire strategy when it comes to your product, not only the development of that, but also the marketing component, the ways you can actually drive people to this. You can get people buying this. You can get people backing this on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. You can even raise funds for this using equity crowdfunding. There's so much potential when it comes to the crowdfunding industry. So if you're interested in learning more, you can always book an individual coaching call for with me down below. In addition, for those of you that do want to discover more when it comes to how do I use Kickstarter, how do I use Indiegogo to kind of get over that initial hump to figure out the price to figure out the logistics and supply chain, to raise capital for that initial order quantity. In addition, man, if you'd like to learn more about how to actually run a Kickstarter campaign, you want to discover the tactics and strategy that go into that, you can also join my free course at the link down below at crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up. If you did, come subscribe to this channel for more content just like this. Again, my name is Sal, and I will see you next time.